What did you uh, what you do with Bret Hart? So, okay, so they're doing a 25th, and you know, the 25th anniversary of the Survivor Series is November. The oh, 9th. my God. Montreal. Montreal. Holy so smokes. So they're doing a 25th anniversary uh, re-release of Wrestling with Shadows. Oh, God. And uh, so I watched this, Wrestling. This with, will re- be, this will be, you You rewatched it? I watched, what, what happened was, um, that's what I did all afternoon, was Brett and I did a, voiceover or whatever it is we, we oh the seeing, the uh well you're not the directors but basically the director's commentary the we, special commentary with dave the special and commentary with me and bret hart okay. going through that entire uh movie how you know, did you go, do this dude oh it was it was, it was i mean, we really didn't like we didn't really comment that much on the movie itself it ended up being mostly brett um just talking a lot about 1997 and and Vince and Sean and going through it and he got emotional at certain points and um he said a lot I'll just say that he said a lot about um you know his thoughts uh, you know even even with Austin and Undertaker you know where you know he he mentioned that like you know he had done Austin's podcast uh, or Broken Skull Sessions and Austin was kind of like well why didn't you just do you know why don't you just do the job you know like that like not really and he thought like you know like austin and undertaker and undertaker sort of said the same similar similar stuff about kind of sided with vince and it's and he's kind of like how can you like know all the facts and side with vince it's very much like you know he he feels like that people didn't really understand the situation and you know i mean again i i probably lived that situation as much as anyone except for probably brett and sean and Vince and maybe one or two other people just the, the way that whole thing went down but um so you know there was that and he boy did he you know it's funny because you know we we talked a lot a lot a lot about Vince and um you know he he talked about Vince I mean no doubt about it and he talked about the fight and um you know there's a lot of stuff it's really interesting um I was more interviewing him and asking him questions i didn't make a lot of comments about different things i thought i was there to more talk him through because i kind of knew what the situation was and he was just going through the whole thing and you know again about how um you know if sean hadn't said what he said about never doing a job for him then there would have never been an issue and you know vince tried to rectify it by having sean go in there and uh you know, he asked Sean, if you lose, you know, he asked Brett, if, if you, if, if Sean puts you over in Montreal, will you return the favor? And Brett said, I, I do it the next night in, in, in Cornwall. You know, I mean, I've, I'll do it on TV. If, yeah. You know, he still had time left on his contract. And so, you know, that, and then Sean was like, nope, I'm not going to put him over. And of course that was more, I don't know, it was more, um, you know, Paul Levesque than Sean. I mean, they were both there in the conversation and Paul Levesque was the one who said, he's leaving. Don't you put him over? And when, you know, and that basically tied Vince's hands because now he had to go back to Brett and go, well, Sean wouldn't do it. Will you please do it? And Brett's going to do, of course, said no. Um, And then at that point, it was like, you know, you know, whatever, I'll put over Austin, I'll put over Lombardi, I'll put over Ken Shamrock, anyone you want, you know. Um, And, you know, the whole thing fell apart and we discussed very heavily the the 30 day non compete, the fight with Vince. He just, I'll tell you what, boy, he, and you know, I don't want to talk too much about what was on it, but boy, did he have some words. You know, the whole, you know, the story about the free shot story, of course, right? Yes. Yes. And boy, did he have words to say about that story that has gone on for 25 years about how I went to the dressing room. I didn't think anyone actually believed that story. There are people who believe it. Wow. You know, and, well, you know, I think because, you know, Bruce Pritchard's, you know, like, like talked about it so many times and, and other people have and Vince did. But yes, you know, I mean, he just I, he, I brought it up. I just go, what do you think about that free shot story? And he was just like, just how ridiculous it was. We locked up. We were fighting. And Vince knew that it was going to be broken up right away. And, he, he you know, he, he's getting there. He goes, Vince was there to make me look bad. And what was going to happen was he knew he had, you know, Sarge was there and. Shane was there and everything, and 
they were going to break, you know, Vince was going to go in there and, and they started and Vince knew they were going to break it up right away. And Brett goes, I knew I only had time to get one punch and I knew that he had my, you know, blocked. So I couldn't do like a regular right. So I had to do the uppercut. So I did the uppercut because he wasn't ready for it. And then boom, Vince goes down and, uh, you know, that was uh, the gist. And then it became, I, I gave him a free shot. I let him have the free shot. So, All I know is, is it's probably been about a decade that I, that I last watched Wrestling with Shadows. But, man, the last time I watched that, at the time it was, uh, it was deadly serious. But, man, watching it, like, you know, 10 years ago, it's, it's, almost, it's almost quaint and ridiculous. Like, a, a fan today... That oh, wasn't watching wrestling in 97 or that just started watching wrestling in the 2000s or 2010s. They couldn't I mean, understand man, why. man, they'd why, watch this thing and they'd just be like, what? No, they couldn't understand. What? Like, wh why would you take this championship so seriously? Not understanding. They would that. have no concept of what it meant back then. Yeah, well, I mean, when I talk to younger wrestlers about it and they, they don't understand. Like, why? why you know, and, and it's like, why would you be so serious about this? And it's like, in 1997, the championship meant something. You know, it's like, um, and, and, you know, Brett, the other thing that, that was interesting that Brett did say, which is, was actually one of my theories all along on why it had to be in Montreal was because WW, WCWF was losing to WCW in 1997, but they were still ahead in Canada and WWF was running a lot of shows in Canada. And I think that the fear was, and there was nothing to fear as time showed, was that Brett was the biggest star in Canada. So WCW um, goes to Canada with Brett on, and you know be on television and, and goes to arenas, and all of a sudden their dominance in Canada could end. And I think that you know they felt that they had to beat, beat Brett in Canada and discredit Brett in Canada. That was part, it wasn't the only reason, you know, because again, you know, Sean's uh, situation um, you know, kind of made it happen. But I think that that was also part of the story was was to, you know, um, discredit him. And, of course, we went through the whole, um, um, you know, creative control, which, again, is one of those things that a lot of people, the WWE, you know, because, you know, the WWE still to this day, you know, always forgets that part of the story, which is the key part of the story, is that he had creative control over the, the last period of the contract. And at that point in time, it was like, it was not, it was like, a, you know, in, you know, I mean, he, you know, Vince could not dictate to him about what he would do. Everything had to be agreed on by both sides. And so that, you know, created a situation. Vince did have the championship on him. He was willing to lose the championship, but, you know, I mean, not to the guy because of what the guy said. And, you know, that's all whatever. And I brought up, you know, talking to Bruno about it and, and uh, talking to Thez about it, you know, who... At first, Bruno was was didn't understand Brett's side, and then I said like, if somebody came to you and said, you know, you you were supposed to do the job for a guy, and the guy goes, thank you, but I will never put you over. Are you going to put him over? And Bruno goes, not, not a chance. And so then he understood it. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got twelve thousand episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.